Hi guys, it's Sierra of Dear Sierra. When I first started Dear Sierra, my um, kind of like vision and goal was to kind of incorporate my love of writing um, and my love of mental health, um, psychology, mental health advocacy, awareness, um, so on and so forth. Um, I feel like Dear Sierra, at least like my YouTube persona of Dear Sierra has definitely kind of really only shown the writer side of me, which I understand because like in the past like two years, year and a half, I have been really on my writing grind, but I've also been in school full time for my um, master's degree in mental health counseling. And I just like have a general like personal interest in mental health. Um, so yeah, without further ado, this is um, mental health topics and labels that get overused or misused. Okay, so first, woo, we're starting out strong. First is toxic. Um, I don't know what Gen Z or even millennial rediscovered the word toxic in like 2019 and decided to just run with it. Full speed ahead, track sprint over all the 400 meter hurdles and just run with it. Like everything is not toxic. Every person is not toxic. Um, people love like being like, these are my toxic traits, tee hee hee. Um, why? Like expand your vocabulary. Um, yeah, expand your vocabulary, that's what I'm about to say. Um, everything that is unfavorable or not to your liking or that hurts you or that you have a distaste or displeasure for is not quote unquote toxic. Um, you being toxic isn't cute, you being toxic but at least I'm acknowledging that I am also is not a like a cute um, personality trait or quirk or whatever. Um, a lot of people like to say that like my toxic trait is blah 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 blah. Um, that's very meany. That's very TikToky now. Um, calling every single ex you ever had toxic just because I want to be with you anymore. Um, it's just too much. It's 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 everywhere. I can't go a day on the internet without seeing the word toxic. A lot of people will just be. Even in their regular conversation, just like talking about like their friendships or talking about like this, it's usually regarding relationships, um, like whether it's a friendship or like an ex or like whatever, or someone that they're beefing with online and just being like, get your toxic ass out of here, or you're toxic, or this was toxic, or he's so toxic, but I love him. Uh, like kind of like almost in like a, you know, like, meme way like oh like ha 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 my relationship is so toxic but like at least he comes home to me or ha 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 like me and, our, me and my best friend are so toxic to each other but we're gonna be best friends because no one else can put up with us ha 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 like I'm just over it I'm over it moving on kind of like on that same note is narcissist now this I'm about to pull out facts for it because Every single person that you don't like is not a narcissist, first of all. Um, someone that doesn't want to give you the time of day is not a narcissist. Someone that um, is more confident than you is not a narcissist. Someone that's demanding um, like what they want or what they believe they're worth is not a narcissist. Someone that is setting boundaries with you is not a narcissist. Your, your red flag should be going off. Like That doesn't make someone a narcissist. So let's pull out my handy dandy iPad and pull up the definition of a narcissist. And also you have to be diagnosed to be a narcissist. You can't just find someone on the street and feel some type of way about them and call them a narcissist. Um, narcissistic personality disorder is an actual DSM-5 <laughs> um, personality disorder that must be diagnosed by a professional. I'll give you a few different definitions. Narcissistic personality disorder. A disorder in which a person has an inflated sense of self-importance. Narcissistic personality disorder is found more commonly in men. The, the cause is unknown, but likely involves a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Um, and I want to see if it has the DSM-5 criteria on here. It doesn't. And even if you're like, oh, well, like, this person that I'm talking about does have a, like, heightened sense of self-importance. You have to rule out other things first. First of all, the symptoms vary and the severity of each symptom varies a lot. Um, I'm just going to ramble off some um, people with this disorder can 
but not limited to, have exaggerated sense of self-importance, have a sense of entitlement and require constant and sense of admiration, expect to be recognized as superior even without achievements that warrant it, exaggerate achievements and achievements exaggerate achievements and talents, take advantage of others to get what they want, expect special favors and unquestioning compliance with their expectation to be envious of others and believe others and be them, insist on having the best of everything, for instance, the best car or best office, have an inability or unwillingness to recognize the needs and feelings of others. The causes listed are environment, genetics, and neurobiology, which is obviously the biology of your freaking brain, which obviously you can't study that and diagnose that if you don't have a degree and if you haven't been working this person long term. I encourage all of you guys to um, actually google the DSM-5 criteria. It's way too long. It goes um, kind of like in a um, Likert scale kind of way, the DSM-5. Um, so yeah, check that out on your own time. Oh, this one I really want to talk about. So self-care. Self-care really blew up. Um, I would say probably like when I was like in like late college, like 2016, 2017, self-care was like the thing. Um, and it started out with good intentions, just like don't burn yourself out, don't beat yourself up, take time for yourself. Quite literally the like, like actual core word structure definition of self-care um, was the main, was the initial purpose. But then it turned into kind of like a ploy to sell products under the guise of self-care. Um, like if you want to self-care, then you need these body oils, you need these bath bombs, you need these candles, um, you need a membership to the spa, you need a subscription wine service to drink wine in your bathtub every night. Um, companies and um, sponsorships to just be like self-care, self-care, self-care. And then at some point it becomes, sure, you can say self-care, but at a certain point it becomes self-indulgence it becomes lazy it becomes enabling it becomes making excuses for yourself it becomes like babying yourself in a sense um and what I mean by that is like oh like I'm not going to buy groceries for a whole week because I'm just so stressed out I don't want to leave my house I have too much going on I just want to Netflix and chills so I'm going to order Uber Eats every day this week that's after a certain point that's not self-care or self-care is I'm just going to go online shopping and spend $500 that I don't need to be spending um, to make myself feel better under the guise of self-care. Or this company is telling me that my self-care um, is dependent on me getting a $500 facial or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, so it's like, yes, treat yourself nicely. Love yourself gently, come up with a routine, do not let yourself burn out, do not be hard on yourself. Um, but you don't need to reward yourself for, I mean, clinically, some people need smaller reward systems set in place in order for them to accomplish goals. Um, clinically speaking, I myself, I have anxiety, so I do need to be gentle with myself and kind of reward myself when I accomplish something that would have typically caused anxiety for me in the past. I get that. And I don't want that to be misconstrued at all. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. But when you're rewarding yourself for the littlest things and the reward is greater than the actual task and it's not, um, they're not, I'm trying to find the word, but they're not like complimentary to each other. Um, you start to only do things for the sake of the reward, not for like the actual prevention. Like say like, okay, I did, three minutes of reading for my homework tonight. So I'm gonna reward myself by booking a flight to Miami. That doesn't match, you know what I mean? Um, so be careful with self-care. Um, I do wanna plug the Gentler podcast um, by Maya Fleming. Um, I became friends with her on Instagram sometime like mid last year, started following her. She's from the DC area. That's why she kind of stuck out to me. She has a podcast called Gentler Podcast. Um, I actually reviewed it in my podcast roundup video. Um, but she kind of takes self-care and kind of like um, explains it, but criticizes it at the same time. And she also kind of says like, hey, like we don't really know what self-care is. It's kind of like a functional term that people are kind of misconstruing and structuring it to fit whatever they want it to fit. And she kind of takes time in the podcast to kind of say like, 
I'm figuring this out along with you guys. Like, I don't quite know what self-care means for me. I don't quite know what self-care means for you, but let's discuss kind of thing. And I like that her podcasts are really super short. Like, it was like 20 or 25 minutes. So, they're not like overly, like, they're not just like rambly and like kind of like going at the same points. I like they're concise and straight to the point. Um, so, shout out to Maya and shout out to Gentler Podcast. I actually enjoy it a lot. And I feel like that's a good place to start if you're kind of trying to figure out like where your footing is with self-care overall. Moving on, I did want to talk about um, bipolar. A lot of people will, um, first of all, a lot of people confuse um, bipolar disorder with um, borderline personality disorder. And I can understand because the lettering is similar. Sometimes people will say like, oh, I have BPD or I have BP. And people think that they're saying like bipolar disorder or bipolar, but they're saying like borderline personality or um, there's another one. Um, there's like a, there's a third one that's not, it used to be called multiple personality disorder, but that's actually not the um, scientific term. It's called something dissociative identity disorder. That's what it is. So a lot of people will be like, oh, like borderline personality. That means you have multiple personalities. Um, first of all, multiple personality is not a real thing. Multiple personality is actually dissociative identity disorder. So get it right. That's not even a real word, not even a real term, um, scientifically anyway. Um, and then borderline personality, multiple personality is not the same thing. And then borderline personality is definitely not the same thing as bipolar. So we need to just clear all that up. Um, let me pull up the definition for bipolar disorder. There's actually more than one bipolar diagnosis. Um, there's, bi there's bipolar one and bipolar two, which I think is very important for people to know. And also bipolar is nowhere near the same as schizophrenia. People use a lot of those words interchangeably, which is extremely problematic. I actually went on a rant probably like sometime last spring or summer when Sway in the Morning was on his talk show and they were talking about someone that I believe said that they were schizophrenic. It takes a lot of like strength and courage and vulnerability to admit that. And then they kind of took their words and were like, ha ha, he he joking, like, oh, like he must not be able to like make music because he's a different person every day or blah, 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 or like he's hearing things and making like so many generaliz generalizations. I'll try to pull up the old Instagram story post that I made talking about that in detail and plug it into here because it really bothered me, especially coming from a black man um, representing the black community and kind of like making light of mental health in general. Um, that's a topic for a whole nother time. Okay, so first of all, I already know this. I can do this without like reading the definition. Bipolar is basically extreme fluctuations in mood. That's all it is. It's not one day I'm Sally, next day I'm Samantha. It's not one day I love you, the next day I hate you. That's not, that's not bipolar. Um, that can manifest in other symptoms and actions and characteristics, but that's not what that, it's not it's not split personality, it's not multiple personality, it's not none of that. Um, the very high moments and moods can last days, can last weeks, can even last months, and that is um, when you are considered manic, when you're on a high. A lot of times because like manic, people think like maniac or mania, which is like chaos, they think like, oh, manic is bad. But in this case, manic is like when you are doing well, when you're almost like overly well, you're overly happy, like you nothing can get you down you're like okay wow like I'm on this really good second wind like things are going good I'm having a good week I'm having a good two weeks I'm having a good month like what is going on this is crazy this is amazing that's manic and then the down parts are depressive depressive episodes um not to be confused necessarily with being depressed it could be but not to be like in that box you know what I mean so that's first things first you have the manics and then you have the depressive episodes um and like i said they can fluctuate they don't have to match them you can be manic for two days and depressive for two months you can be manic for two months and be depressive for three months I mean, like it doesn't matter you know what i mean for a bipolar one you have to have had at least one manic episode um and the bipolar one disorder may or may not have a major depressive episode um so manic episodes can be so severe that you require hospital care um so yeah you can get so high end that it's like what the hell um, so manic episodes are usually categorized by the following, um, exceptional energy, restlessness, trouble concentrating, feeling of euphoria or extreme happiness, um, for seemingly no reason, um, risky behaviors and poor sleep. So obviously like the energy part is like a huge thing that's mentioned multiple times, poor sleep, restlessness, and exceptional energy. They mentioned your energy levels, your sleep schedules three times. So that's a big deal. 
Um, and the symptoms of the manic episode tend to be so obvious and so intrusive that there's a little doubt that there's something wrong. So it's like because they're feeling so good, they're like, I can't, nothing can really be wrong with me. I can't be sick. I can't be having an episode because I feel too good. You know what I mean? Um, and it's obviously like so, so nice, I guess, in, in comparison to the contrast, you know. And then for bipolar 2, um, the, dis the disorder involves a major depressive episode lasting at least two weeks and at least one hypomanic episode, which is a period that's less severe than a full-blown manic episode. Um, people with bipolar 2 typically don't experience manic episodes intense enough to require hospitalization. So basically, bipolar 1, the manic is more prevalent. Um, bipolar 2, there's definitely going to be depressive episodes and there will be episodes that kind of um, tread towards manic but you don't have to necessarily get to like the high, high manic points to be bipolar in the bipolar 2 category. Um, so basically the symptoms of bipolar disorder overall are mania, which we already talked about, hypomania, which is basically not quite high mania, less severe than a full-blown manic episode. Um, depression, which can include tiredness, irritability, trouble concentrating once again, changing in sleeping habits once again, changing in eating once again, thoughts of suicide, it can be that extreme. Um, and obviously bipolar disorder is run in families, genetic, whatever, whatever, whatever. So I took a long time on that one because I wanted to really, um, emphasize how serious this is. Um, once again, you have to be diagnosed. You cannot tell Sally on the street that she's bipolar. You cannot, um, say, oh my God, I'm so bipolar because you're on your period and you have PMS or because you snap on your best friend. Just don't. You know, like, just don't. I don't want to be like that, like, Miss PC, politically correct, like, do this, do that kind of thing. But, like, it's very simple. You wouldn't go around saying, oh, God, I have so much cancer today. Or, oh, God, my diabetes are out of control. When you don't have those things, you know what I mean? So, treat it the same way. I don't understand why that's such a hard concept for people to grasp. And the last one that I think I'm going to save for another video because I do want to go in on this topic and in this own video is um psychopath versus sociopath those words get interchanged all the time with each other not the same thing um and i can go in on this topic we can talk about serial killers we can talk about um just serial offenders as far as like um taking advantage of people being manipulative whatever 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 even though i'm in the process of getting my degree i would never out of my mouth without like any like clinical whatever whatever evaluation i would not call someone a psychopath i would not call someone a i know it's fun to just say like oh my god she's a freaking psychopath i can't tell you what you say in your own personal conversations um do i have conversations with friends where they use these terms yeah um but i just need you guys to understand what you're saying when you're saying them and also get that like you don't even really know what you're saying if you inform yourself and then still after informing yourself and doing all this reading all this research still want to call your ex a psychopath by all means but i'm just here to say you're likely misusing the term and you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> i was in a totally different video on psychopaths versus sociopaths because that can get really juicy and actually really interesting i find it to be very 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 interesting um so that's it for today's video these are just the basic mental health terms, trans, labels, whatever you want to call them, that are often misused and definitely overused. Um, I'm sure I can think of some more. I'm sure you guys can think of some more. So if there's more you guys want to talk about, um, leave them in the comments and we can kind of revisit some of these um, or talk about new ones as well.